she in the West End. Like two pics, now I'm in the close friends. Link one time, now she wanna hold hands. Spend what you want, I got too many bands, I got too much cash. What's up y'all? So today we're in the studio. I figured I would bring you guys in here because I haven't really shown anything of the music and stuff I be doing. And I just wanted to get out all my thoughts, share with you guys what I've been thinking, what I've been doing. The guy that records all my stuff, he's been with me from the jump. I started probably trying to make music right when I got to LA. I think it was a time where I had graduated and I was like, I've always wanted to do it. I've always loved poetry and rhyming and raps and rappers and shit like that. But I never really had the opportunity to do it. I was Drexel full-time, four years, YouTube channel, school work, so I couldn't really make the music thing happen, but came to LA, crazy story. This was 2019. I was in downtown LA wearing a like bust down iced out watch because I'm what's known as an idiot. I think I was smart enough where I was like hiding it, but whatever. So I'm in this jewelry store and this huge, scary black guy comes up next to me, huge face tats, huge, terrifying. And he's like, hey, I like that watch. And I was like, oh, appreciate it. And then he and I just started talking and I learned that his name was Pac-Man. He and I, we became cool, we became friends. I learned that Pac-Man was one of Nipsey Hussle's good friends. When I'm looking at this Pac-Man guy, I was like, you have a really cool look. We should put you in one of our YouTube videos. Fast forward a little bit, he was like, yeah, bro, I'm down. Like, that's awesome. I love like having fun and shit on camera. And we put him and he was the, when the voice doesn't match the rapper video, I'll just pop that up so you guys know what I'm talking about. He was in that video, Pac-Man came over. And then when we were filming Pac-Man, he brought his recording engineer, who's now my recording engineer, whose name is Jay. And I've been recording with Jay for the past 2019, 2020, 2021, 20, holy shit, three, four years, Jay's son was a fan of the videos. So he brought his son, it was amazing, whatever. And I told Jay, I was like, hey man, I would love to get into recording and making music. I've been to some other studios. And he's like, yeah. And this man is the most patient, nicest dude on the planet. I could save that whole story for later. It's, a, it's an incredible, cute story time. But yeah, today I'm in the process of finishing up the mixtape album. I don't know what I want to call it. I've been working on it for a long time. Uh, whenever I get a free chance or whatever I'm available on the weekends, I'll come in here, lay some stuff down. And it's been a very therapeutic process for me. I have an absolute blast when I come in here. I like try to think of rhymes and I try to think of stuff that's funnier than I'll try to be like meaningful and shit. So it's been an incredible experience. And I'm on the home stretch. I got most of these things recorded. I'm gonna come here today, try to knock out as many things as I can. The lighting is a bit iffy. Let me just show y'all here real quick. I'm gonna go to the other studio room that I love to record in. Welcome, this is the booth. Super cool. Damn, this thing look expensive. So this is where I was all yesterday and where I'm gonna be all today. You got the screen in here so you can see all your takes and all your fuck ups. And then the little stool in here. I can even turn the light on in here. Y'all can see what's going on. How this shit work? Oh, there it is. Yeah, you can see what this looks like. But microphone, I be just going in, just, I be singing my heart out, saying all type of bullshit. Yeah, cool setup. I've walked down the hallway now and I'm gonna show you guys my favorite place that I record in. It's the other one I was just in and it's this room as well. This is called the Scarface room, but it's a very cool, I don't know, I kind of, I'm matching the vibes right now. They're black and red. This is one of my other favorite rooms in this facility where I record in. Let's pop in here. It's got the same stars on the roof. I posted on my little Finsta. Is that what it's called? I have a Finsta. I don't know. This one's got another cool the soundproof walls, lights in the roof, super cool. Like I said, my other favorite spot to record for sure. I've said this before, but record Recording and making music and stuff, it's therapeutic at the end of the day for me. It's therapeutic and also at the same time, it's fun because it's another extension of me. I think a lot of people, when they m see me or meet me, obviously I'm known as a YouTuber to them, but then to my family, I'm someone else. And to someone who doesn't know me at all, I'm someone else. Like I've, I've met a lot of people who came across my Instagram and I, they saw that I had posted some songs I did. They're like, oh, so you're, you're a rapper. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, nah, I, I mean, I make YouTube videos. And I was like, technically I'm a lot of things. It just depends your relationship to me so some of my greatest influences and like role models they wear a lot of hats and I really look up to like the, the childish Gambinos and the Tyler the creators of the world because they just do it all I'm thinking to myself you know I, I have a passion for making videos but sometimes that doesn't that's not fulfilling when I'm in the library for the 496th time blasting inappropriate music I'm like I want to do more stuff so being able to put out music and do the artwork and like the videos and shit it's my favorite thing to do and I haven't quite had time to do it but now I'm like bro the time is now I put out a handful of songs. I did the song with Fetty Wap. Fetty Wap just got six years in jail. Holy shit. But I did do a song with him and that was an amazing experience. And I just thought, bro, the sky's the limit. I DM Fetty Wap and he said, uh, yeah, bro, I like the song you just put on your Instagram. I'll give you a feature for free. I said, oh, 
come on, dude. And this dude's a multi-millionaire. He does not need, like he wasn't even asking me for any money or nothing. It was crazy. That really helped me out. But since then, I've been in contact with a bunch of popular artists. Like a lot of big people follow me. And I'm just thinking, this is a very incredible window of opportunity I have to make art, and inspire people. And I'm like, why not? So yeah, I, I never have shared any of this. I've just been going to studio sessions, never filmed it. I've always been like, the, eh, nobody cares. But yeah, I hope that any, anybody watching who, I don't know, likes music, cares about music, rap, whatever. Number one, I hope you enjoy my stuff, but I hope that you kind of get inspired too to like, just do whatever you want. Like I said, this shit is so fun, bro. I be talking to myself laughing and it's because I love doing this so much. I love like poetry and being able to make somebody feel something from just your words. The same way I like videos, like I would always share videos when I was younger with my family and classmates. I'd be like, watch my video. I'd show it to them and like wait for their reaction. And if they laughed, like that was my favorite thing. And I've gotten the same sort of feeling when I want to make music. I, I remember we were at San Diego, was it San Diego State University of San, fucking, it was a school in San Diego. We went there, walked by this kid and he's like, holy shit, I'm listening to the, your song with Fetty Wap. And I was like, and this kid, I just was randomly just sitting listening to it. And I've had people come up to me like, oh, this one, yo, this one was a banger. I fuck with this one. And I'm like, whoa, dude, like it really means a lot to me when, you know, I put a lot into something and then somebody's like, hey man, I fuck with that. Or it's like, I can relate to that. I think music's so subjective to where I don't listen to Taylor Swift at all, but I could agree that she's a great singer, a great performer, a great, you know, superstar. And people's ears and tastes and things that they gravitate to, it's all different. But if I'm able to find that sort of community that likes my sound and likes my beat taste, and likes my sort of lyrics or whatever, or cadence or delivery. That, that's what I do it for. So yeah, I've been doing this shit for three and a half years now. I have so much fun and I'm glad that I can now bring this to you guys and just go all in. So today, what I really wanted to do was preview some of the songs, you know, feel the temperature of the room, see how you guys are feeling about it. I'm gonna go to another studio to explain the, have I been in here yet? Oh, I ain't been to the blue room yet. Oh shit. Shout out to the blue room. Let's go to this first one. Now we're in the money room. See the green color? Set this stool up. So whenever I'm recording, like my process is essentially Actually, I know a lot of producers and a lot of people that were like, yo, let me send you beats and let me send you a beat pack and stuff. And I feel kind of bad because I'm so picky with what I think sounds good in terms of beats. I don't like when things are generic. I feel like these days with music, everything, like you've heard it all before. Not to say that I'm the most unique thing that's ever graced the earth. Not like there's another light skinned guy who wears fitted hats. I like to stay away from like more generic -y beats that are just don't have a lot of instruments and sounds to them. I just personally find the sophisticated type of beats better. I'll go on YouTube and I also have for, I have producer friends that make YouTube beats, but then they'll also send me stuff personally. And they're from different countries and shit. They'll be from Copenhagen and uh, the guy I just talked to that just sent me something. He's from Belgium. Like, I think that's so cool. Like the foreign producers and shit. That's what I do. I just go off the beats first. I'll, I'll write lyrics to something. If I think of something funny or a, a funny bar or line or whatever, I'll jot it down in my notes and then I'll try to insert it into a song if possible. And sometimes I'll I'll write a song to a beat and I'm like, eh, I don't like it. And then I'll find a new beat, put that whole, all the lyrics and put it on there. And I'm like, yeah, I'll keep that one. So yeah, when I'm listening to them, I let the beat pick me. I don't even pick the beat, to be honest. I'll listen to it and then I'll write from there. That's what I'm gonna be doing today is I'm gonna pick the beat, write to it, record the whole thing and then see. And then sometimes I know a lot of talented people and people that could be features, whatever. And I'm thinking, hey, I might not sound good on this part. Oh, but they will definitely go crazy on this one. So that's another thing I'm experimenting with and hopefully I can uh, set some of those features up and shit. And now, the man of the hour, Jay, who records me. People don't know, you're who I got the R Robin tattoo idea from. If you didn't have this, I would have never had it. Damn, that's crazy. And now, why did you get it? Why'd you get the R? Because I'm Batman, of course. Oh, look at that. Hold on, let me see that. Holy shit. And my son's Robin. We DC fans. And how long have you had that tattoo? Uh, like maybe over five years or something. And now, I've never even known this about you, but what got you into recording and like into music and all this shit? Because I, I don't even know anything about that. Basically, my dad, my dad was in a Spanish group when I was a kid. So uh, I used to grow up, he used to play at clubs and Spanish clubs at night. So on the weekends when he would pick me up, he'd have to work. So he had to take me with him and they used to hide me behind the, the bar and the bartender used to give me free soda all night. And I used to just watch my dad perform. He was a drummer while people would dance to his music. So I guess that kind of sparked it all. Wow. Yeah, how did you gain in like a network of people and like start? Cause obviously this being your facility, how did you go from nothing to here? Yeah, uh, man, long story short, I just, kept interning and networking i really wanted it bad so i started interning at studios i was given a shot took advantage of the opportunity that was given to me and uh the dude was cool he saw that i was really hungry and he put 
helped me to do the graveyard shift so that's how I started because he was married of course he wanted to be home to his wife so he threw me all the sessions he didn't want to deal with and all the weekends and graveyard so I just started building up my network word of mouth and just kept growing from there and eventually I partnered up with some friends and we opened this facility if you want to name drop who have you like who have you recorded who's been a here like oh man well it goes back generations so it goes back like older to like tierra war those are like uh, legendary bands like from the 70s that's where i first really started like in rock then after hip-hop i did like the dog pound i done like sand dog from cypress hill at least some of the members from wu-tang new would be like pac-man the gunman of course like you know young tos or brbe uh mozzie didn't like, you tell me like did you say trippy red or who did uh namir namir brought trippy red uh to the studio i remember and sean kingston oh wow Wow, that's incredible. Obviously, I'm basically the same type of status as the legends and shit that he just named. We're gonna go record right now and y'all can see the process. Here we go. I lead the way, you're free to follow You and me is like a runway to a supermodel Chef G and Sleepy Hollow You a worker, Archer, you know free to call him. Yeah, I told you I'm on the way I'm on the way, I told you I'm on the way Yeah, that's hard, that's hard Yeah, that's it